everyone, I'm Marianne Zerscher. Today I'm going to be demonstrating couching. Now couching is one of those stitches that is probably the most versatile stitch that I can think of. Couching is one of those stitches that has just an endless variety of applications. You can couch with different stitches. The thread that you're laying down can be anything, really. Uh, you can couch strips of fabric. I mean, anything you want, you can couch. And then the thread that you use to couch, whatever that is, down, you can apply different stitches in order to couch it. Very exciting. So pick up a piece of wool. That's what I like to use. Wool is so easy to stitch through. Um, a needle and a couple different varieties of thread. And let's stitch together. So I have my circle, my my circle here, I've whip stitched it down. I did a how to whip stitch tutorial, which the link should show up right about now, upper right hand corner. This is a ribbon floss, a cotton ribbon floss, and it's wonderful for couching for a couple of reasons. One, it's nice and thick, but another is, is that it has a secret magical power, which is that you can ruche it. So I have my, my ribbon floss here. And I'm going to go ahead, and for my ribbon floss, I'm going to use a number 18 chenille. For a thicker thread, um, an 18 chenille is what I use. If it's a, a an 8 weight thread, I would use a number 24 chenille. If I'm going to do a wrap stitch, something like a French knot, uh, a drizzle stitch, a bouillon knot, something like that, I'm going to use a milliner's needle. So when I thread... I hold my thread in my right hand, my needle in my left, and I bring my needle to the thread instead of bringing the thread to the needle. It makes it much easier. So a quick review. You would hold your thread like this under the needle, the needle on top, wrap it around with a thick thread like this, wrap it around once, pull your needle through. So it doesn't matter where I come up on this circle. I'm going to come up and then I'm going to start couching clockwise. I'm going to put my thread, my needle and my thread over here like this. I'm just going to anchor it down so it's kind of out of the way. So I'm going to use my painter soft uh, cotton thread which is about the equivalent of a of a number three weight thread, which means I'm going to use my number 18 chenille. So if I want my couches about an eighth of an inch away from each other, then that's where I'm gonna put this one. I'm gonna come up and then I'm going to go down right next to where I came up. And then I'm gonna go my, it's a little more than an eighth of an inch, but whatever that is, And then I'm going to go back down. Do you see right where I'm coming out? I'm going to go down. I'm going to take my little bite. Okay, so I'm going to go back down where I came up. And I'm going to come up again. Somewhat equidistant, you know? It doesn't really matter. I mean, all of this is so lovely because... It, it really doesn't have to be exact. It can be close and it's gonna look fine. So I'm gonna go back down where I came up and I'm gonna come up again. And then I'm gonna continue in this way for a little while. I'm gonna show you how to ruche this because it is one of the beautiful aspects of this thread of this floss, this ribbon floss. So what you do when you're ruching is you're going to take your needle out 
That's why it's such a long piece, because I wanted to show you how to do it. You grab a strand here and pull it. And what happens is you're going to get a ruche. Do you see? And you just keep pulling. So once I have my ruching all the way around the way I want it, I just lay it out to sort of see how it looks. And then if I like that, I'm going to kind of leave it there. And I'm going to start couching with the same thread that I was using before. But this time, instead of just making a stitch, I'm going to go ahead and use something like a French knot. So a French knot, you're going to put your needle on top of your thread. And with a thick thread like this, you could do one wrap. I like two. It gives it a little, it, it just gives it a little more form. One knot would probably disappear a little inside of all the ruching. And I want it to show. So I'm going to ruche on the edges. And... I often like to kind of stagger it. So when you do your French knot, you're going to come up you're going to lay your needle on top of your thread and you're going to wrap twice and then go back down next to or very as close as you can to the hole that you came up in, but not in the same hole. If you come, if you go down in the same hole, your French knot is in danger of disappearing completely. When, again, needle on top, wrap twice, go back down near to where you came up, pull your thread through, If I wanted to, I could use a different color, a contrasting color, and that would be kind of cool too. So one more time with the French knot, needle on top, wrap twice, go down close to the hole that you came up, pull your thread through while holding this thread with your finger. Okay, so now I'm nearing the end. I'm going to take this last bit and I'm going to pull it straight. I'm going to clip off my thread that I had used for ruching. And I'm going to re thread my chenille number 18 needle. And now I'm going to go right back down into the place that I first had originally come up. And I'm going to take my couching thread. I'm going to put it up right where that ending is. And I'm just going to go back down so that it covers where the thread begins and ends. Just like that. I have the plain couching here. And then I have the ruched ribbon floss that's couched with French knots in the soft cotton. These are other examples of couching. This is using a silk ribbon and a running stitch and then a cast on bouillonade. This is, these are pistol stitches. This is ruched ribbon with a, a contrasting metallic in French knots. This is a silken chenille Eleganza with pairs of bullion knots. This is what I was doing before, but where you put three close together and then a, a longer bit and then three close together. And that gives it a different look. Here I'm doing a little cross to couch it. So I hope this was helpful and that you enjoyed watching it and learned something. Please don't forget to hit the like button 
and subscribe as I'll be going through Sue Spargo's creative stitching book, One Stitch at a Time. And I'd love for you to join me.